Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. This here is Porty's Garage, home of DIY, mostly geared to automotive, but here it makes you just never know what you're gonna get. You can see I'm on the back porch again. That means it's time for another radio review. So we've got a radio sent to us by Radio Oddity. It is a Baofang, as you can see from the box. We've got the Baofang there, and it is the NAK6. So today I'm just gonna go over the features of the radio, uh, show you what came in the box, talk about some of the programming, some of the things I like about it, some of the things uh, that I may not like about it. Then we're gonna hook it up to the Shurcon power meter and the mag mount and test the uh, wattage that comes out of this bad boy here. So again, this was sent to me by Radio Oddity. I'd like to thank them. It is the NAK6 from Baofang. So let me get things turned around and let's start showing you what came in the box. All right, here we go. Here is the NAK6 from Baofang, the K6 series. It's got a little different appearance, but uh, she's nice. You can see the light on there, switches on the side, the mic comm connector there, and this one I got with the 2600 milliamp hour battery. I put a uh, knockoff Nagoya on. It came with this smaller antenna. I just wanted to do that to compare with hitting the repeaters in the area because I've done a lot of testing with that antenna. This did not come with it. I'm using that to connect to the Surecom right there. Uh, so it came with the battery. It's got the, what I call the secret service earbud that connects into the side comm port, goes to your ear, belt clip, wrist strap, and it does have a cradle there and you can see the nice box. Uh, oh, and the booklet that came with it. Uh, booklet is kind of nice. I like it, reading through, figured out how to program it. So let me get this set up and I will go over some of the features of the K6 series Baofang. All right, here is the K6 series. And before I turn this on and show you what uh, the screen looks like, you can see it is set up pretty much like some of the UV5Rs. Got the AB switch, the frequency mode, channel mode, uh, a lot of the same features here. It's got some programmable push buttons here, and I'll show you what some of those do. I didn't program them, but I'll show you what some of them do. Your push to talk, and then your comms port on the side. That's the same as always. And it's got a blank key there. Like I said, I've got the 2600 milliamp hour battery. Um, and this one did come with the shorter antenna. I'm sure you can get these in different packages, two packages, single package, double battery, uh, different handsets, that kind of thing. So one thing I was going through the book, uh, the channel, and what I did like is it has a setting uh, and you can program it to show the voltage. Watch when it turns on. Channel mode. It showed the voltage real quick. So that gives you an idea of what the battery is at right there. So Six, four, I'm going to put it on three. channel three. They were just doing a uh, net check-in down in Detroit. So I wonder if that'll come in. Uh, so we'll leave that on while we sit here for a minute. So what are some of the features here? It's got 999 channels. It is supposed to be six watt. You can see I've got the dual watch going here. Frequency range, let me show you the paper here. So you've got 65 megahertz to 108, you can receive on only. You've got AM from 108 to 136, receive only. You got VHF 136 to 174, VHF 220 to 260, UHF 350 to 390, and then you also have 400 to 520, which does include the GMRS. So you can listen, that's only received, to uh, GMRS. Now on transmit, you've got uh, VHF, the four, two meter, which is a 144 to 148, and the 70 centimeter, which is the 120 to 150. So those are uh, the frequency specs on that. So let me take this quickly here. And one thing I want to go through, if you go memory menu. 23, that should be squelch. You hit the menu button the and you can see I've got that at two. There's three. I'm going to leave it at two. Confirmed. So that's pretty much the same operation you had before. So that works. Uh, the naming, I like menu, menu. 
39. So channel A, I've got to set the frequency. I can change that to channel or name. I don't think I have anything programmed in the name. Let's see what happens when I do this. Exit. Uh, so channel A, it put the frequency there because I don't have anything in the name right now. So let me go back. I'm back there again. Whoops. So 40 is for channel B. I'm going to go name, menu, and let's keep it frequency so I can check on my paper. Exit, exit. All right, there we go. Uh, the dual watch is the memory 38. Dual watch, dual weight. So uh, you've got that. Let me see what happens when I hit that. Single weight, off, dual weight, single weight, off, dual weight. I'm going to keep it on the dual. And you can see I've got the two right there. Uh, what I did find interesting here, 57, is a stopwatch is on. So this does have a stopwatch that you can use, and you can program that into one of these side buttons here. So that's pretty interesting. Uh, and it was 34, so menu 34, power on. So let's see what we can do. We got voltage, which I like, logo, message, or voltage. I'm going to leave it on the voltage. Because I like that you can tell what your battery's at then when you turn it on quickly. So if you press and hold, it's got NOAA. Whoops, I better get out of this first. Press and hold. On. Lows in the upper 30s. So you can see there's NOAA, the and if I hold this. Wednesday. Scanning begin. Highs in the mid 50s. Wednesday night. It, it'll clear. scan through channels. Lows in the mid 30s. Scanning stock. All right, so you can see 60s. channels, see what happens when you... 2, 30, so it's going through different ones, and I don't remember which... Rest of today, east winds I'm going to leave it on one, that's what I'm picking up. So let's see if I can turn it off. In the morning, then partly off. So there's Noah. FM, that's this. I'm going to turn this down so I don't get copyright. Oh, I just turned on the light. Sorry there. Um, let's try that one. Oh, sorry. It's just a quick. There. I did that wrong. You can see it's just a quick press of the top one. And I've got this light on again. So here you can see FM. So there's a song you can see on there. I want to keep that off. And if you hit the scan button again, press and hold, and nothing happens. Oh, you just press it quick. Sorry about that. And you can see it scans through different channels here. It seeks and it's finding different channels. Whoops. I just turned it off. Channel mode. Let's do that again. On. So that's kind of neat. It scans through those. Turn that back off. Channel mode. So you saw the frequency. When you're in channel mode, press and hold. It should scanning, begin. scanning the channels. I don't have all the channels programmed. It's got a bunch in on its own. And then a uh, press and hold. Scanning stock. Now if I go to frequency, frequency mode, mode and press and hold. Scanning begin. It'll scan frequencies, and you can set the skip at what it's going to skip while it's doing the frequency. Scanning stop. Let's go back. Channel mode. Channel mode. Channel one. Two. Two. Three. Three four. and four. So that's pretty neat there to go through some of those. I did find an error in the book here. Let's see if I can find where I wrote down what the error was right here for that power on message it said menu 40 it's actually 34 so if you go back in the book it gives you here what all the menu shortcut menus are and you can see 
that on 34 right there, power, you can do logo, message, voltage. So uh, when you have this book, this makes it quick for programming. Now I did not have this programmed before I got it. So I actually, or not when I pro not before I got it, I did not use Chirp to program this. Uh, I just turned it on and I had to program by hand. It took a little bit to get used to it. Once you're used to programming, it's go. it goes pretty easy to go through and I gotta be careful. I, I don't change anything here. So you can do, you can see frequency, text, and then you put your codes in, you type it in, you put your other codes in, you type it in. Uh, you've got, where is that? Shift, oops, sorry. Shift direction plus or minus, and then you have your offset, and then you need to first delete the channel you want to put it in, and then you store it in the channel you want it in. So that's how you get that. Let's just make sure we exit. And you can see I'm on channel four. Six, I don't four, have that program in four. I've three, got three I've got two, two I've got one, one I've got. Uh, and then you got the AB, which you can see the cursor drops down to AB. So that's where you'll be transmitting on. So those are some of the neat features on this. I'm going to hook this up to the mag mount. I'm going to pull off this Nagoya, hook it up to the mag mount. Well, actually, before I do that, let me see if I can hit some of these repeaters here. So I'm on channel one, and I had to program them in. Channel one is the Holly repeater. Let's see if I can hit that here. Doesn't look like I hit it. Now maybe I programmed it wrong too. Two. Let's go to channel two, and channel two is in Pontiac. So I hit that, that's uh, about 12 miles away. So the Rensen, Four, four, three. That is correct. Let's see if I can hit that. This is uh, thirty some miles away. Let's keep it vertical. I don't think I hit it. I sometimes hit it here. Sometimes I got to be up on a, a higher roof. So let's try top of Troy. Four. And let's see if that works. No, I don't think I did. So it does see, you can see here that uh, Frequency mo channel mode. I've got it. The offset is plus. That is correct on the paper. And then hopefully I've got all the right uh, offsets and, and uh, CTS codes programmed in. So let me stop this here. I'm going to hook up the mag mount and the Surecom power meter. And let's see if this baby's actually putting out um, six watts. So give me a minute to get things turned around. All right. So I've got the adapter connected to the Surecom. Surecom goes out to a mag mount. I've got sitting right over there. So I'm going to try with the mag mount. It's a bigger antenna. I'm going to try. This should be a two meter one. Oops, sorry there. 147.14. And that is the top of Troy, 20 some miles away. So let's key, key this up. It does say high power right there. Well, look at that wattage, 6.23. That's actually very impressive. Nothing came back. I wonder if I got this programmed wrong. So let's go change channels here. Six, Look wrong four, way. Three. Three, this is the Rensen, 36 miles away. So this is 70 centimeter. Two meter and four forty. Welcome to the G M A R C link repeater system W W eight G M. So you can see I hit the repeater. It's odd. This is only 2.87 watts. I wonder if I've got a loose connection. I'm going to hit that one more time. Nope. It's still saying 2.83. So it looks like 70 centimeter was lower. Let's try. I got the two more here. Let's go. Four. Wrong way. Three. Two. So channel two is the Pontiac repeater. And this should be two meter, 146. So let's key that up. And I do say hi. So I hit that no problem with the mag mount. And I've got 5.38. 
And I've got one more that I did not hit. One. Channel one, which is again, 70 centimeters. Let's see if this drops back down to two. Now I didn't hit this with the, with just the Nagoya. So let's see what happens here. Let's key up. <laughs> Look at that. So I hit the repeater uh, and it's only 2.87 watts. So that's, I wonder if I've got something programmed wrong or if they actually have on 70 centimeter, they're only two to three watts, but on the uh, two meter, they're up at six. So I'm going to go back down to the top of Troy, which is channel four. Two, three, four. And let's see if we can make contact with anybody. This is six watts. K-E-8-U-W-Y, testing a K6 series bow fang for a YouTube channel. Looking for a signal report. I didn't hear anything come back on that. So this one I'm not sure if I had uh, programmed right. So let's go down to the Rensen. Now this was only two watts going out. Let's see what happens here. K-E-8-U-W-Y, uh, testing a K6 series bow fang for a YouTube channel, looking for a signal report. So I hit it. Again, it was 2.8 watts, see if anybody comes back. At two watts, you may not be able to understand me there. And then I will try one more. I'll try the Pontiac here quickly. See if anybody's there. Now they just had a net and I don't hear them on the net anymore. So let's Ooh. hope that's not causing any problems here. All right, let's try Pontiac here quick. K-E-8-U-W-Y, testing a K6 series bow fang for a YouTube channel, looking for a signal report. So I hit it. Again, 5.4 watts on the two meter. Size, but uh, I give you a signal report you are full quieting. And there, they're in an exercise. I'm going to stop there then. So um, I better not transmit on that channel anymore. All right. So let me turn the camera around and just wrap this up, and we should be good. But uh, we, I believe we, we received your pictures. Yeah, Mike says yes, we did, so thank you for your contribution. All right, so that should about wrap it up. Uh, nice radio. You've got some clips of people talking. It comes in very clear. You can see. Sorry about that. Um, that was 12 miles away with a mag mount I've got right there. Uh, it's kind of interesting, and I'm actually going to ask uh, Radio Oddity to check into why I have such a difference in the power between the 70 centimeter and the 2 meter. But the general functions with the battery, things have been lasting a while. I've actually been had this on in programming, and it's still putting out that kind of wattage, which is nice. The 999 channels is good. You can see the 6 watts is good. FM radio, the NOAA, I love all that. That comes in handy sometimes, uh, especially with what just happened uh, down in North Carolina where they have a lot of towers and things that are out and communications are down. That's when uh, no one having these radios would, would come in pretty handy. So uh, I'd like to thank Radio Oddity again for sending this. Uh, I like this radio. It's got a little different look than the UV5R. Got a lot of the same features on it, uh, and it seems to work very well. So if you like the content, of uh, the, you know, these different radio reviews. Make sure you like and subscribe and share the video. And thanks for watching Forty's Garage.